Hello, I'm Alex Hui. In the past two videos, I have been talking about what diabetes is from a modern medicine and traditional Chinese medicine or TCM standpoint. So today, we're going to start to talk about applications. So today and the next couple of videos, we will be talking about how to prevent and how to treat diabetes. Before we begin to talk about the content, I would like to first say a quote from Sun Si Miao, who is regarded as a king of medicine in ancient China. So in his book about the chapter of diabetes, he says, Whether it can be cured or not, it all depends on the patients. If the patients know how to be cautious in lifestyle, it can be cured in 10 months. If the patients do not cherish themselves, they are not far away from death. From this quote, it clearly states that diabetic patients are fully responsible for their own health and have to be really cautious about their own lifestyle. I personally do know someone who has type 2 diabetes and because he is taking medication, he does not care about whatever he eats, does not rest, does not do any exercise, and over the short term, it might not be significant. But however, in the long term, there might be a huge price to pay. So remember, you are your own best doctor. To review what we talked about last week, the three main goals of treating diabetes are number one, control. We have to control blood glucose level because if the blood glucose level is too high, there might be horrific complications. For type two diabetes, controlling the blood glucose level together with all the lifestyle habits that which we will talk about later may even reverse the insulin's resistance. Number two, increase life expectancy. Time is the most valuable resource that we have in order to live life to our fullest. And by controlling diabetes, we can have a longer life expectancy. Number three, improve quality of life. We won't be happy even if we have a long life if we have to lie in bed 24 hours a day, we cannot spend good quality time with our family and friends. So by controlling and treating diabetes, we are able to spend good quality time and to live life to the fullest. So in the next couple sections and in the next videos, I will be talking about how we can achieve these three main goals. In treating diabetes, there is no one singular solution. It is a long-term and integrated method combining different modalities. So I have summarized nine pillars of treating diabetes, and they are monitor, medication, education, diet, mental health, exercise, sleep and rest, quit smoking and alcohol, and TCM. We will discuss them one by one. Number one, monitor. Diabetic patients should regularly monitor and record their blood glucose level. And that is because of two reasons. Number one, to prevent any complications due to a constant high blood glucose level. And number two, by knowing the regular blood glucose levels, diabetic patients can develop a reasonably well treatment plan. And that is because having a high blood glucose level is dangerous. And so is having a blood glucose level that is unstable and constantly fluctuating. Many people are not aware that even if the blood glucose level is not too high, but due to the huge fluctuations in glucose levels, it can also cause complications. This is because the fluctuation of blood glucose levels could damage the cellular linings of the blood vessels and affect the normal function of the autonomic nervous system. Hypoglycemia could be dangerous, especially for elderly or people who have had a long history of high blood glucose level. So for these people, make sure do not lower the blood glucose level too fast and make sure steadily lower them. And actually in some cases, it is even beneficial for them to have a blood glucose level that is slightly higher than what is considered normal range. So, but of course, the most important thing is to consult a doctor because they are the ones that know your body's best. So for hypoglycemia, I'll be talking more about that in our future videos about complications of diabetes. In conclusion, we have to wisely and steadily lower our blood glucose level. And in order to do that, monitoring is key. Medication is crucial for some diabetic patients because it can control the blood glucose level very well. So no matter it's insulin therapy or any other forms of oral medication that belongs to this category. And your doctor would know best which medication is best suited for you. And once the blood glucose level is being controlled, and once the lifestyle habits are being improved, then we can start thinking about how to lower the medication level and eventually 
we can reverse the diabetes and not need any medication at all. Number three, education. Knowledge is power. A lot of patients do not take full responsibility of their own health, but they put the responsibility on the doctors. However, the doctors are not there 24 seven to educate, monitor, and give advice. So the patients will need to deal with this and to learn as much as they can so that they know what to do, what not to do about their lifestyle habits. After all, this is a battle that they have to deal with in their body. And besides the patients, the family members are also really important. They have to understand what diabetes is, not only because they can help the patient, but also they will understand what the patients are going through. For example, diabetic patients might always be hungry and want to eat. And I know some family members might be impatient and even scold the patient. But after learning about diabetes, they might understand that sometimes the patients really can't control it because the hunger feeling is real. So understanding and caring from family members is crucial in the healing process. And by doing that, education is important. Number four, diet. Diet is a foundation of prevention and treatment of diabetes. And this has a lot of information in this topic so that I will do another specific video about diabetic diet next week. Number five, mental health. Mental health has great impact on diabetic patients. In TCM, there is a saying, excess anger damages the liver, excess joy damages the heart, excess pensiveness damages the spleen, excess sorrow damages the lung, excess fear damages the kidneys. I can explain more of that in a future video, but no matter what type of emotional disturbances, it can disrupt the yin and yang balance of our body and disrupt the natural energy circulation of the internal organs thus leading to worsening of the diabetes situation and could lead to various complications. So a patient has to be happy, calm, and satisfied in order to have a faster recovery and making sure there are no complications. Attending more social activities are great to be able to express themselves and talk to people, thus releasing the negative energy in the body. Learning new things or attending hobby classes can also help. To deal with emotional disturbances, you can do some Qigong exercises or do some pressure point massages for stress. And also you can do the following breathing exercise. So you can sit on a chair or lie down in a bed and then close your eyes and do a couple of deep breathings. So breathe in and when you breathe out, breathe out all the air inside your body. Breathe in and then breathe out all the air inside the body. And we can do that a couple times. And afterwards, we do the same breathing, but at the same time, we are going to exhale. We're gonna ex release all the tension of the body, one section by one section, from the top to the bottom. So breathe in, breathe out, relax all the tension in the head, and then we're gonna slowly work our way down. And for this exercise, we can do about five to 20 minutes, and then we can do one to three times a day. So besides the breathing exercises, other physical exercises are also great in terms of dealing with stress and emotional disturbances, which I will talk in the next section. Number six, exercise. Exercise is crucial for diabetic patients. It has a below benefits. Improve insulin sensitivity, lower blood glucose, blood pressure, and blood lipids. Improve cardiovascular health, help lose weight, Good for muscles, joints, and bones. Good for brain health and memory. Increase energy levels. Reduce stress, anxiety, and depression. Make you happy and increase confidence. Improve sleep. Decrease risk of type 2 diabetes, strokes, heart disease, osteoporosis, many types of cancer, and many others. So we all know the benefits of exercises. So however, for diabetic patients, we have to be especially careful and planning the exercise routine. And especially for people who has never done exercise before, we have to consult the doctor first to know the limits of the body, have a tailor-made exercise plan. And same like lowering blood glucose levels, by exercise, we cannot go from zero to 100. We have to do that gradually. So remember, this is a battle over the long term, not just the next week. So we have to make sure we have to prevent any injuries and do not burn out from doing exercises. It is also important to have at least 10 minutes of warm up 
and 10 minutes of cool down before and after your exercises. They can help to prevent injuries and regulate your heart rate. So here I will introduce you four types of exercises that are great for diabetic patients. Number one, walking. Walking is a basic form of exercise that is easy to implement and that is simple and everyone knows how to do. However, what I mean by walking, it doesn't mean the speed of walking in the shopping mall and slowly browsing the windows. When I'm, what I mean by walking is that it has to be slightly faster. You could swing your arms and ideally there will be slight sweating. Walking can be done once a day and 30 minutes each. For people who have never done any exercise, they can start with 5 to 10 minutes and gradually increase the time. Number 2. Cycling Cycling is a great exercise form since it has low impact on the joints like the hip, knee and feet joints. So it is great especially for diabetic patients who are overweight. Same as walking, patients can do 30 minutes per day and the best is to sweat slightly. And the good thing is that you can also do cycling indoors when it is cold outside. Number 3. Dumbbell Workouts Strength training is very efficient in terms of lowering blood glucose level, improving insulin resistance, and strengthening of the bones, joints, and muscles. There are weights that are as low as half a pound, and it is good to incorporate exercises that involve the coordination of the lower body so that we can achieve a full body workout. For these types of strength training, diabetic patients can practice 2-3 to three times a week and 20 minutes each time. Number 4. Qigong and Tai Chi Qigong, which translates to energy cultivation exercises, are great for diabetic patients, according to a publication on the American Diabetes Association. Qigong therapy for 12 weeks resulted in significant reductions in fasting glucose levels in patients with type 2 diabetes and demonstrated trends towards improvement in insulin resistance and A1C. These results suggest that Qigong may be an effective complementary therapy for individuals with type 2 diabetes. In the past, I have done many videos on Qigong exercises, and you can feel free to watch them and practice those. For Tai Chi, Tai Chi is actually a combination of Qigong and martial arts, and it is very effective for diabetic patients. But for now, I have not done any videos for Tai Chi yet. If you're interested, please type in the comment section below. Of course, the above exercises are not mutually exclusive, meaning that you can do a combination of those. For example, Monday walking, Tuesday cycling, and so on. And also, according to your individual body type and interests, you can do other forms of exercise as well, such as dancing, swimming, jogging, or hiking. The most important thing about diabetic patients doing exercise is that they have to be cautious and making sure the blood sugar level does not drop too low to cause hypoglycemia. This is especially easy to happen if right after insulin therapy or after any medications. Usually, it is relatively safe for patients to do exercise between 1-2 to two hours after the meal. However, if they have to do exercises after 2 hours of eating, then they can add some snacks accordingly. And in case during exercise that you have symptoms of hypoglycemia such as feeling very tired and hungry, sweating, dizziness, or looking really pale, stop the exercise right away. You can take some fruit juice, snacks, or glucose tablets. And this is to prevent any serious complications from happening such as loss of consciousness and even death. Number seven, sleep and rest. Studies have shown that by sleeping less than six hours per day can lead to an increased risk of diabetes by three times. And according to my last video, the reason why diabetes can occur in TCM theory is because of a yin deficiency plus an internal heat and internal dryness. Nighttime during sleep is the best time to nourish our yin. If a person does not sleep enough or sleep too late, that could lead to expanding the yin energy resulting in a yin deficiency which could increase the chances of getting diabetes or worsen the diabetes condition for diabetic patients. To have a better sleep, below are some tips. Do not drink coffee, tea, or alcohol after lunch. This is because caffeine can stay in the body for 8 hours, thus affecting sleep quality at night, same as alcohol. Do not eat too much before sleeping. Having a full stomach while sleeping is not only hard on the digestive system, but will affect sleeping quality. Do not exercise 2 hours before sleep. 
Doing exercise before sleep can lead to excitement of the nervous system, thus affecting sleep. The two hours before sleep should only do relaxing activities. Be asleep before 11 p.m. As I have mentioned many times before, 11 p.m. to 1 a.m. is the most important time to be asleep according to the body clock system in TCM. Sleeping later than 11 p.m. restricts the recovery of the body and can lead to a yin deficient plus internal heat body type. Avoid any stimulants before sleep. TV, cell phone, or anything that could excite our brain should be avoided before sleep. Besides not sleeping well, overwork is also a very important issue in terms of leading to diabetes in modern society. Overwork means an over depletion of energy due to physical activities, mental activities, and sexual activities. Overwork leads to weakening of the body's internal organs and increases the chance of various complications. Remember, don't be a candle, but be a rechargeable battery. Number eight, quit smoking and alcohol. Nicotine can increase the blood sugar level and can decrease the sensitivity of insulin. So therefore it could worsen the diabetic condition and even cause various complications. Not to mention that smoking can also cause different types of cancer, cardiovascular, digestive and respiratory diseases. However, we have to be careful in the way we quit smoking. This is because the process of quitting can easily cause an increase in appetite. So people might be eating more than usual. And this is not good for blood glucose level. In TCM, there are actually pretty effective methods in quitting smoking. And if you would like me to make a video on this particular topic, please let me know in the comment section below. According to TCM theory, alcohol can produce internal heat, which is one of the main causes of diabetes and long-term drinking can also cause damage in the liver, pancreas, and digestive system and cause various complications. So for diabetic patients, it is best not to drink at all. But I do understand asking some people to quit alcohol right away is very difficult. It has already become a part of their lifestyle. So you can still drink if your diabetes situation is under control, but please remember the following. Do not drink excessively each time. Everyone's body type might be different, but approximately do not drink over 350 millimeters of beer or 150 milliliters of wine each time. Do not drink more than two times per week. Decrease eating if drinking alcohol. The drinks themselves may contain a lot of calories, so make sure to lessen the amount of food you eat while drinking. Avoid beer, sugary wines, and cocktails. These types of drinks may pack lots of sugar. Do not drink on an empty stomach. You could eat a little first and drink. So one, it prevents getting drunk. And secondly, it can help to relatively stabilize the blood glucose. Do not engage in sexual activities after drinking. This is because it can deplete the kidney chi even more. Number nine, traditional Chinese medicine or TCM. Although TCM's speed in terms of lowering blood sugar level is slower than that of modern medication, it does have its strengths. TCM sees the body holistically, and it is great in terms of regulating metabolism, improving symptoms, and preventing complications. And if you go to see a TCM doctor, besides the lifestyle recommendations that I just mentioned earlier, TCM doctors would likely have two forms of treatment, acupuncture and herbal medicine. Acupuncture uses needles to stimulate specific pressure points that can help to regulate pancreas function and insulin levels. It can also reduce stress and help treat symptoms of various complications. Since I cannot perform acupuncture on you virtually, in the next video, I will be sharing with you a set of self pressure point massage techniques for diabetes. And herbal medicine is also very effective in treating diabetes. It can help to reduce the symptoms of diabetes, reducing the side effects of medications, and assisting in lowering blood glucose so type 2 diabetic patients can slowly decrease the use of medication. TCM is slowly developing and being recognized in the West. However, there are still a lot of regions that do not know of TCM. So, but because of its strengths that it has, I highly believe that combining modern medicine and TCM is the best way to treat diabetes. And the earlier diabetic patients can combine both modern medicine and TCM, the better the treatment results would be. 
So here is the introduction of the nine pillars of treating diabetes. So now we should all know that lifestyle choices plays a crucial part. So in the next video, I will be talking about pressure point massages that can effectively treat diabetes. And the one after that, I will be talking about diabetic diets. Thank you for watching today. If you have any questions, leave in the comment section below. Stay healthy and I will see you next time.